we know that gold will reflect the continued destruction of paper money. We know that the world cannot stop printing money. Uh, they're doing it now, but short term gold doesn't always reflect uh, the, the, the actual printing of money. You know, it moves in its own way. And of course, there is also uh, intervention with gold. We see that coming in quite often. But I am not a short term investor. Uh, and uh, you see, I don't worry about the, the shorter term here. We have been into gold since 2002. And we went into it because we saw uh, the risks in the world as unacceptable. And we saw that the debts and the deficits were going to uh, go up exponentially. And therefore, uh, we decided that gold was the best way. Physical gold outside the banking system is the best way to protect against these risks. Uh, and that's we bought gold at $300 in quite a big way for ourselves and for our clients. And you know we haven't changed, changed our minds since. You know, and we've seen gold then going up and down to, to well, since 2002, you know, we've gone up to 1,000, down to under 700, and then up to 1,900, and, and down again a few hundred. And, you know, these, these small movements here are totally irrelevant. We know that gold will reflect the continued destruction of paper money. We know that the world cannot stop printing money. Uh, they're doing it now, but short term gold doesn't always reflect uh, the, the, the actual printing of money. You know, it moves in its own way. And of course, there is also uh, intervention with gold. We see that coming in quite often. But the paper gold market is, is uh, insane, totally insane. Doesn't reflect what's happening in gold. So, you know, as you know, the price is set in the paper market. And the paper market, the, the gold price that we're looking at, uh, now on the screen has nothing to do with the real price of gold. When gold goes down, we don't see a single seller of physical gold uh, in our market. And that's a real market. It's just a paper market and it's primarily a COMEX market, which is relatively, you know, not that big in relation to the total uh, gold market. Uh, and and uh, experience tells us that we shouldn't worry about what the Fed says or, or what the Fed indicates uh, any day because they're always wrong. They're always behind the curve. They're always wrong. Uh, and But the market focuses on, on the minute by minute basis. We focus on the long term, and that's why we are in gold, of course. What we are looking at is risk here. Uh, the risk is very clear. We are looking at a world which where you know, debt has grown exponentially. You know, just take, at the beginning of this century, global debt was, well, let's say, 100 trillion. Uh, now it's 300 trillion. Uh, uh, you, you, and this is the same with U.S. debt, uh, European debt, uh, e EU debt, etc. So, and that's not stopping just because everybody thinks the Fed is now going to tighten. They can't afford to tighten. This debt and this deficit is not going to stop. You know, the, the, the stock markets are are just insane. They're not reflecting what's happening in the economy in the world. They're, all they're reflecting is a lot of money be, being flooded into the markets and, and they're reflecting liquidity. We are now looking at markets which are on, on a historical basis more overvalued than ever, any time before in history. So, you know, I can't see how they can afford to, ta uh, uh, to taper because the U US economy will crash. And if they temper temporarily, they will reverse it immediately. Uh, so that's, uh, and in any way, it's not gonna be in the short term. Uh, a lot of people think that interest rates will still stay, stay low forever. If the Fed can decide, yes, they will stay low forever. But the Fed will not be able to decide in the long term because the weight of the debt will actually make the bonds crash at some point and the Fed will not be, be in any position to uh, actually stop that. So we're looking at a lot of factors here which will be out of the control of the Fed in my view. Uh, and therefore, uh, I don't think we should worry about any tapering of any significance in the next six months or so. Uh, and the trend is so clearly down. Now, these small wiggles that we're seeing now, a little bit stronger dollar for a few weeks or, or, or whatever, that means nothing. The trend is down, the trend is strongly down, and nothing is going to stop that. You know, that's, that's what history tells us. No currency has ever survived. The dollar has lost 98% since uh, 71, 1971, as I said, and it's only 2% only left to go to zero. That's going to happen. You know, that's going to happen in the next 10 years, less probably, maybe five years. And remember, for the last 2% that, that, 
that's 100% from here. So we're going to say, see the dollar, but not only the dollar, it'll be all currencies. They can't all go down against each other at the same time. So they will take turns and be stair stepping. But nevertheless, they will, they, we are going to see that final fall now in the, in the next few years. Nobody's looking at long-term wealth preservation. Uh, you know, we, we are not interested in Bitcoin. It has nothing to do with wealth preservation. It might be a wonderful speculation. It has been for a lot of people. It might, it, Bitcoin might go to, to a million dollars or it might go to zero. That's such a binary investment that, uh, that we wouldn't touch it. And in any way, electronic money has nothing to do with wealth preservation. It might be a method of payment. I don't think it will be either in the long term because if it's, if it's too successful, uh, the central banks will stop it because they cannot see a currency competing with uh, their own currency. And uh, we know that they are more, all very likely to issue uh, digital currencies in the next five years or so. Uh, Bitcoin has affected on the margin, but that's more the speculative money. The long-term money that are into physical gold, they're not worried about. We, we and our clients, for example, they're not clients who would buy Bitcoin. They wouldn't be interested. So, so it's, a, it's, a, it's a, I don't think you should compare the two, but investors do, and investors are interested in short-term returns. Uh, and um, you know, the institutions are always late in their decision making. We've seen a few institutions, uh, you know, not a handful, let's say, going into physical gold now. Once inflation, once they realize that inflation is for real and is here to stay, they are going to have to inflation protect their assets. They're not going to buy a massive amount of gold, but you know, now today only half a percent of world financial assets are in gold. If that went to 1% to 1.5, there wouldn't be enough gold in the world. Every time in history, currency has died. And we are now, in my view, at the point when these currencies that we see now, the, the, the dollar, the euro, the yen, all of them basically, are, are, you know, at, at the, uh, are in the end game, which means that they are now finishing the race to the bottom. They have the final 2% left, as I said. Uh, so so that, therefore, yes, that obviously, uh, what has happened until now is that all of this money printing has stayed within the banks uh, or um, you know, within a very few in, uh, investors who spent that, hasn't got to, gone to the consumer, hasn't got into the, the, the main economy. Therefore, we have seen no velocity of, uh, of, of the money that has been printed. I think the money printing we're going to see in the next few years, because that is the only tool that central banks have to save the system, but they're not, of course, uh, you know, a debt problem can never be solved by more debt, but that's the only way they know. I'm sure they find methods of, of writing off the old debt and creating a new debt instead and, 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 and forgetting about the old dollar and there'll be a new digital dollar. But that's just kiddums. has nothing to do with reality. You cannot get rid of debt. If you get rid of debt, uh, the assets that are backed by that debt will also uh, implode. And that's what I see happening. In the end, the debt will, will actually... Uh, disappear and so the assets will implode also that's why we're going to see assets falling in real terms not in hyperinflation ter terms in real terms assets could fall you know, in my view at least 90 percent stocks bonds property they're all going to fall by 90 percent in real terms